Thank you, Ria. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone, uh, wherever you are in the world at the moment. I'd like to welcome everyone to today's event, uh, an international update for the May June 2021 series. Um, today's presenters will be familiar faces to those who've attended updates over the past few years, as we have Assessment Director Haley White and Head of Assessment Strategy David Casey, who will be going over a number of topics today. Um, those of you from China and Southeast Asia will probably know me, but for everyone who doesn't, I'm you and one of our uh, international portfolio managers. And along with my counterparts, Topi Gay and Paul Kelly, um, we'll be monitoring the chat and answering any questions that you send through. On the questions, just to say, you know, please do um, ask questions, but we would advise you to wait until the relevant section has been covered, just because there's going to be a lot of information that's gone over today um, and a lot of the, the the questions you ask will probably already be planned for. Um, and today you are going to hear about the av options available to you, this series, um, the additional assessment materials and the support available. And um, we also asked for questions to be pre-submitted before today's event, um, and we'll look to cover those at the end of the presentation. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to our assessment director, Hayley White. Thanks, Ewan. Um, and as Ewan says, absolutely, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to, to all of you from a, a somewhat sunnier London. Uh, we have um, blue rather than grey skies this morning, so hopefully looking up. Um, so we have um, a, a number of things to get through in uh, the next uh, just short of an hour. Um, we will make sure that we cover as much information as possible, but really importantly, we will share with you where to make sure you can get information um, after today and, and um, through the coming weeks and months. So um, with the aim that, you know, this session is as useful as possible for you. So I'll run through some of the options available um, for this summer series, uh, a little bit different to, to any other. Um, we'll then cover off um, some of the materials available to you and, and how you may use them. Um, and then we will make sure that we spend some time talking about the support that is available for you. Um, before coming to your pre-submitted questions um, and throughout we will be answering, as Ewan said, um, the questions that you have for us um, that you share in the chat function. So just to make sure that everybody's absolutely crystal clear, just want to cover off the context in which we're operating and um, firstly and most importantly to say that it remains our ambition to closely align the approach for our international qualifications with uh, the approach taken for our UK qualifications. Um, we understand how important that parity is um, and we are doing everything we can um, to, to maintain that alignment, making differences to the approach only where is absolutely necessary and, and we'll touch on a few of those differences as we move through. So um, fundamentally, students will receive a grade this summer that is awarded and determined by teachers. Um, students must only be assessed um, and are uh, assessed in the, the loosest terms on what they have been taught. So that, that really means that in the evidence that you gather, and we'll talk about the different ways that you can do that, um, the evidence for students must only cover content where teaching and learning has taken place. And that is really the, the key way in which we can account for the disruption that's been experienced to a, a varying degree of levels um, over the last year. Really important to note, there will be no algorithm used, so grades won't be adjusted in any way. Um, the grades will be submitted, derived and submitted by centres um, and then results issued by us as your awarding organisation. And you'll be able to draw on a range of evidence to determine the grades. We don't mandate what evidence you use. Um, there are no applied weightings. Um, 
but we have gone as far in the guidance document, I hope you've seen, to outline a number of different optional routes. And really that's for you to choose the route, the option that best suits your students um, and your scenario, your setting, you know, the impact that you're dealing with. Um, and so you don't need to, um, you, you just need to make a decision between those routes, basically, and we'll make sure that we'll uh, align our support to the to the option that you choose. One of the uh, the key differences, in fact, with the the UK qualifications is that we are making available to you unseen materials. So they're materials that have never been used before in an assessment purpose. They look and feel like the exam materials you were expecting this summer. Service, the use of both, and um, we were we confirmed in our uh, qualification bulletin that I hope you received yesterday that the marking service um, is an additional service that is covered within your fee uh, that you've paid for the qualification. So those fees as were published in January. So in terms of timelines, there are a number of key dates. And what I would ask that you do is that you uh, regularly refer to the um, updating timeline that's on our website. So there are a number of dates that are set in stone, um, but there are dates that are still to follow. And I think it's really important that, that you do keep an eye on that timeline so that you know what is expected from you and what you can expect from us and when to expect it. Um, so I'll not go through each of these uh, um, dates in turn. Obviously, the key date is the, the 18th of June, which is the submission date, the, the deadline, the final date by which you can submit. You must have submitted your uh, grades for your students or any student who you are expecting to issue a result to. We must have a grade for, from you by the 18th of June. And of course, you all know by now that we have the results dates as the 10th and 12th of August. So both uh, level two and level three within the same week, which I'm sure uh, will be um, not so fun for, for all of us to manage. I think it's the first time I've certainly known the results days to be in the same week. We know that it potentially increases the burden on you and we will make sure that we're really clearly signposting our support for, for those two results days so that you've got everything that you need. So I talked of the, the range of options available. The thing to note with these is that they are kind of illustrative options. Um, you which you are selecting the policy, you'll of course refer to what you're doing in terms of range of evidence and, and what your assessment strategy looks like. But in terms of um, uh, confirming which option um, you're uh, going to be following, you don't need to, to flag that to us in any way other than if you're expecting to use the marking service. And if you are, what we ask is that you make that clear on edX and online so that we can make sure that we've got um, the uh, assessment associates ready to mark your student scripts. So there are a range of options um, and they, as you can see on the, the right hand side, they correspond to a, a quality assurance approach that reflects the controls around the assessment taking and the uh, uh, the evaluation, if you will, of that evidence. We will provide more detail in the next week or so on the different stages of quality assurance. There is a bit of information in the guidance document already, but we will be making that really clear and how it may relate to each of these five options. Um, the important thing for you to do at for you to do right now is to think about your students, think about the evidence that is available to you um, and how you can supplement it. Um, and uh, and also think about, you know, the um, 
uh, how your uh, teachers um, will assess that evidence. And if it's something that you need our help with in terms of the marking service, then um, then you equally know, therefore, that you need to use the unseen materials. So I think there are, there are certainly some key decisions that you can work through now. So the international guidance was published on the 1st of April. Um, it is a fairly hefty document. I think we're up to 50 odd pages. I would urge you to make sure that you have gone through that document um, really clearly. There are a couple of supporting kind of checklists and need to know documents that can also be found on our website. And uh, David will share the links with for those uh, towards the end so you know where to find them. I was in two minds as to whether to issue checklists because it somehow implies that actually the meat of the document isn't um, as important and it absolutely is. So the, the checklists are an aid memoir. The focus um, absolutely needs to be on the detail within that guidance document. So if you haven't yet been through it, I would urge you to. So as I said, it takes you through um, the quality assurance process, starting with the submission of your uh, centre policy. Um, in the last couple of days, we've made available an editable version of the uh, centre policy so that you can really get to grips with that. We've, we've tried to fill in as much of it as possible for you with the view that you can add or delete as necessary. Please do that. Don't feel that you need to write it from scratch, but you do need to be confident that everything you are saying within that policy, you can evidence and you can um, show adherence to throughout the latter stages of the quality assurance process. Um, there are three main stages to the process. So the first is the centre policy, which I've described. We will review every policy submitted to us and we will um, follow up in the latter stage if we feel that there are any gaps or anything that we don't understand in your centre policy. So um, the point being that we are not going to be adjusting grades this year with an algorithm or such, and therefore our focus absolutely is on making sure that we get it right collectively um, up front so that you understand your responsibilities, you have processes within your centre to make sure you can be confident in the grades that you submit and that we understand the process that you're following. Um, we will be um, carrying out a sample of um, some centres um, at subject level um, and the details will follow that it will correspond to the option that you select out of the first five um, but we will be looking to um, validate the approach that you're taking by working through um, some of the evidence that you've gathered and some of the decisions that you've reached at a subject level um, and we will talk more about that and how that will work um, in the next couple of weeks. We have issued um, some guidance on grading and what you should be thinking about and referencing in order to um, derive your student grade. So, for example, it is absolutely important that your grade represents performance that you are able to demonstrate in the evidence that you've gathered it isn't a projection of the student's potential. And that's really important. And it is a departure from last year. So um, you need to be absolutely clear that you're looking at the evidence bank for a student and you are able to reference the grade descriptors or the marking exemplification or the grading exemplification. And you really understand the key features that assure you that that student is, is worthy of the grades that you are deriving for them. What we will be doing um, for those of you that are using the uh, marking service is we will be publishing some paper performance statements and they will be uh, similar uh, to our examiner reports 
that we've published in previous years, and they will reference previous um, uh, grade boundaries of previous exams and will pull out kind of key characteristics of performance because what we will not be doing and what we're not able to do is issue grade boundaries for the unseen materials this year. So we will be making sure that you have got an understanding of how the unseen materials have performed versus previous materials so that you've got a good sense of what the grade should be um, having used those. Quite difficult to talk hypothetically, but um, we will be getting those out to you. Um, obviously, once the, um, the marking has taken place, um, but we will make sure that you're really clear what to expect beforehand. In the guidance document, there are five steps. Uh, that take you through the things that you should cover when you're confirming the grade, and I would urge you to work through them. The other thing that we cover in the guidance document is the use of data. And what I would suggest is that you spend some time thinking about how useful data is for you historically. You know, do you typically have fairly stable cohorts? Or can you rely on your data, um, you know, historical data to project um, student performance if so then you know that will clearly be a, a key point of evidence for you this year if that isn't the case then you need to still consider it and make sure that you're explaining in your center policy why you may not be relying so heavily on data um, so either way you do need to consider it and make sure that we're clear on how you're using it um, so just a point of note, and um, and it may be something that we can uh, provide further guidance on um, as we uh, move towards those grade submissions. And with that, I'm going to hand over to uh, David. Thanks, Hayley. Um, so uh, good, good afternoon, good morning, uh, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, I'm just going to talk through the unseen assessment schedule, uh, some of the additional assessment materials um, and where you can find some of our support and, and what you can expect from it as well. So there have been some questions coming in just around unseen assessment and, and the marking service as well. And I've been beavering away trying to answer them um, as much as possible. Um, but hopefully those that we haven't got to yet, we will be able to answer through um, this section as well. So. The unseen assessment schedule does run from Monday the 26th of April to Friday the 14th of May. Um, it is uh, not mandatory um, that you, you use the unseen assessment uh, materials. It's not mandatory that you follow the unseen assessment schedule, um, but it is one of the options that is available um, to centres studying our international qualifications this year. Um, there is a date on the front of the paper is the date which indicates when the paper can be sat from. Uh, up until that date, all materials need to be stored securely as they would be in any normal exam series. Um, that is to guarantee um, or as, guarantee as much as possible that these uh, assessments are unseen. Um, obviously, after that date, um, it is harder to guarantee that things are unseen um, as they are then out um, publicly in the public domain. Um, we do appreciate that for some centres, they may be using them um, a day after. Uh, they may be using to use those assessments in uh, a slightly different way, um, editing them, taking certain topics from it. That is um, perfectly uh, acceptable um, uh, to, to do with the approach this year. It would just need to be outlined uh, within your uh, centre policy as well. So to allow for that um, flexibility, there is no time slot that has been defined for these assessments. Um, and that is just intended to give um, you the best flexibility in organizing the sitting of those assessments. Um, and again, it, just, it, it comes based on different individual needs. Uh, we know there are some um, centers that have uh, been uh, not, a, not as disrupted as others and therefore have covered more of a specification perhaps um, and therefore would like to use it as a, a more of a traditional perhaps um, exam style paper but others uh, needed and wanted the flexibility to be able to um, 
uh, amend them or, or just focus on certain topics. So the unseen assessments are, are designed um, to be able to offer that flexibility um, as well. And then as Hayley has uh, mentioned as well to accompany that, we have got our marking service. Um, so we are offering the marking service to all centres for international GCSE and international A-level qualifications. So that is um, here in the UK um, and also around the world. And as we confirmed yesterday in our qualifications bulletin, that is included in your qualification entry fee. So there, there's not uh, an extra charge for the marking service. However, what we do need um, is uh, centres to opt in to that service by the 26th of April. Um, so please make sure that you've, you've contacted us, that you've told us that you are intending to use that service. That just helps us to be able to plan, to make sure that we have enough examiners to mark it and obviously return it to you um, in a time frame where it is helpful. Um, we don't want them to be returned um, late. Um, so we do need to know by the 26th of April, I, I believe, and you know, I apologise that there was, I believe there was a communication sent out the other day um, that had an incorrect date on it, but the 26th of April is the date that we need uh, centres to opt in by. Um, we will then uh, mark that material and we'll return a mark um, to centres. We are aiming to return all marks no later than the 11th of June, um, but we will be uh, releasing those material, uh, not material, sorry, we will be releasing those marks um, to uh, centres as soon as we have them available. Um, so it might be that you get um, different marks arriving at different times as well. So do keep an eye out um, for that. That is just to be able to get it back to you as quickly as possible to be able to use to determine the grades. And all of that is dependent on materials being returned to Pearson um, to us no later than the 1st of June. So uh, please do make sure that you're, you've returned them as quickly as possible. Um, and Hayley has already touched on it, uh, but we are not returning a grade um, for these uh, unseen assessments. We are returning a mark. That is because we can't go through our normal awarding procedures this year, but we are going to be releasing those helpful guides that show how the paper has performed, how it may link to um, sort of previous series and how um, we can support in determining a grade um, this year as well. Uh, and then I probably covered these last two bullet points and what I've said there, but the, the scope is for all of the timetabled um, examined papers, as well as any window papers. So things like uh, international GCSE, IT and computer science um, it, are, are all involved in those um, IAL MFL speaking units as well. Um, and we will be contacting customers in the coming days just to outline how some of those papers may need to be returned to us, accepting that they may be in digital formats and we want them returned as quickly as possible. Um, but the things that are not in scope are any endorsements or uh, non-examined assessment. Uh, so they're traditionally internally assessed by centres um, and we're following that approach and they can be used uh, as part of the basket of evidence um, in deriving a grade. So no change um, for those. Uh, now the additional assessment material, um, there were a few questions uh, coming into the, the chat box around these and, and what perhaps um, some of the, the, the um, mapping grids and things are within them. So just to, to talk through quickly for those, um, as outlined earlier, um, we aim to align the uh, approach as far as possible um, to, to the one being implemented in the UK, um, but obviously allowing for, for the flexibility um, that is needed on an international level. So there are past papers available with those past papers. There are examiner reports. There are grade boundaries um, that, that already exist that can be used to help uh, when determining a grade. Um, we are also offering mapping grids for our international qualifications. So mapping grids um, will just support teachers in being able to de determine um, where a question has come from, what it was particularly targeting on a specification. And that is just designed to make sure that when you are compiling your basket of evidence, you have got uh, a wide range um, that covers the specification um, as well. Uh, and then obviously we've got the unseen materials that are being made available for international qualifications. And that's where we have the difference um, 
between sort of the UK and the international. Uh, none of it um, is mandatory. Um, it's just to reiterate, the unseen materials are non-mandatory. Um, and we will be making um, all of the mark schemes uh, for those unseen uh, materials as well available uh, under Padlock um, on our website as well. Um, they are being dispatched as we speak, so they may start arriving in your centres. You may already have some of them um, locked away and kept securely um, in your centres already as well. Um, so just a, a little bit more on how these, these could be used. They will be uh, familiar um, to teachers and students. Um, they will look and feel like a normal question paper for the unseen uh, assessment materials. They can be used in, in a few different ways, as I've mentioned, uh, within the time frame or after the specified time frame. Um, but understand they may be familiar to students. Um, the mapping grids uh, will be made available for all international GCSEs and IALs. And then just a, a note on those mapping grids as well. They, they may look different um, for each qualification. And that is purely to reflect um, the, the makeup of each individual qualification. So we know there are some qualifications uh, where the traditional exam uh, papers have more questions than others. Um, uh, thinking of, of uh, the difference between a maths exam uh, and perhaps a history examination where the history examination might have less questions, but they are longer um, uh, higher tariff 16 mark questions perhaps than a, a maths question which may be between sort of one to four marks as well so they are going to look um slightly different and that is just because of the, the sort of the number of questions the breadth uh, the depth of what we have um available for those as well um and those support materials as i, I mentioned already does include the past examiner reports um we are releasing uh, marked examples of student work from past papers um sort of where they exist uh, and then just just plenty of links um, to some of the the other support that we've got um, with supporting marking for for these uh, materials. Um, we have got our timeline on the website, um, and it does show you um, side by side for UK and international qualifications um, when things are available, uh, whether they are under padlock um, or publicly available. Um, there will be people on the call today that may be offering uh, UK and international qualifications. Um, so please do do have a look at that as, as well. It will just help to outline when some of the, the key things may be um, released. And the final section from me, uh, just before we, we move on to uh, some of our pre-submitted questions, and, and Ewan will take us through those, is just about our communications um, and our our support uh, in general and where you can find it and, and what you can expect from it. Um, so to get the latest information, um, obviously sign up for uh, our qualification bulletin. And I know that comes up on another slide and I can see from some of the questions um, and messages we've got coming in that um, plenty of you receive those as well. Um, but, but do make sure you've gone to our Pearson Professional Development Academy um, and uh, make sure that you've accessed the uh, the resources that we have available on there. Uh, there's downloadable guides. We, we've just finished uh, recording some training videos. Um, they will be available um, on there shortly. We've obviously got access to all the uh, live training, the pre-recorded um, sort of events as well. Um, and it covers all of the topics that we, we are uh, looking at for this series. So around grading, um, additional assessment materials, quality assurance, um, unconscious bias and appeals is something that will still follow. Um, so the support is still coming um, and it is being expanded upon over the coming weeks, but the vast majority of that general support uh, will be available for, for all international qualifications by the 4th of May. Uh, there are things on there already um, that sit across UK and international. The principles are the same, so you can access that support um, already. Um, and there is just a link here to, to sign up to um, find out when that uh, training becomes available. But I, I do recommend that you go and have a look uh, within the Pearson Professional Development Academy. Um, but we've also got our, our main Summer 2021 support uh, webpage. 
um, that will take you out to um, some of the, the key links as well um, that may be hosted on other pages or, or on other pages within the website. So I do recommend that you also have a look at the, uh, the website. Uh, from there, you can get through to the subject support guides, um, which are becoming available um, for qualifications. There is an example there of uh, the UK GCSE uh, maths um, support guide, uh, and that just links to where we've got um, some of those those key documents as well. This this is a really important uh, document for um, teachers. Um, it, it's um, hopefully will make navigating some of the key pieces of information a bit easier um, because it's all in the one document. But from within there, you can then link through to the examiner reports, um, past papers. Um, it's got the key dates. It's got any additional materials uh, are, are contained within there as well. And it's also got links to where the existing support sits, so the, the Professional Development Academy um, as well. That is available under Silver Padlock um, on our website as well. So you will need the passport. Uh, not passport, sorry, the password um, to access that document. And again, that is just um, to support you as teachers uh, and centres to make sure that there is a, a, a level of security with some of these materials um, as well. So do take a look at those. And there is also some helpful information on the Ofqual website. Um, it's, it's targeted for UK qualifications, but it is helpful uh, nevertheless um, to... Um, understand the process within there. There are some things for centres, there are some things for students um, on there as well. And as I've already mentioned, um, please do make sure you're signed up to receive the qualifications bulletin. Uh, we did send our, our latest copies of um, those bulletins out yesterday. They are uh, a source of important information. Um, we will continue to, to update um, through those channels with any sort of key messages new pieces of information um, that do come out um, as well. So please do make sure that you're, you're signed up for those. And those are sent uh, every two weeks uh, as well. Um, but obviously, we've got uh, a lot of what we're talking through today is focused on um, teachers, heads of department, heads of centres, exams officers. Um, but we know parents, uh, students, carers are crucial in um, the, the approach taken this year, and there is a lot more um, uh, engagement with students this year. Um, we want them to, to understand what's being uh, used in part of the basket of evidence for them um, so that they've they've got a, an ownership in the, the grades that are determined this year as well. So we have got um, a students, parents and carers um, web page as well. So on there, you will find um, a video and a letter from Hayley, who you've uh, met on the call today. And that just explains how students' um, grades are going to be determined this summer and the support that we're providing um, to schools and colleges. Again, more of that will continue to evolve as we work through the process. There is a student timeline on there of um, important dates that relate to um, the students. They won't need to know uh, some of the same deadlines that um, internal staff may need within a centre, but nevertheless, it's important to, for them to understand that. Um, feedback is a huge, um, uh, hugely important um, factor for us this year as well. Uh, and feedback really does make a difference. It does factor into our thinking. We do look at it on a daily basis. So there is a feedback form uh, available on our website. So student parents and carers can get in touch um, should they need any further help and support. Likewise, we have a feedback form available um, for uh, teachers, heads of centres, exams officers um, as well. That was shared in the bulletin yesterday. Um, but you can also always contact our, our customer service teams and, and they do pass that feedback um, on to us as well. And it does factor in our thinking. Um, and then some of the last points, there is, a, again, a, a helpful off-call infographic that explains kind of in a visual way how grades are going to be awarded this summer. And then uh, similar to our uh, UK uh, and international qualifications bulletins. Uh, we do have a parents and carers, carers newsletter that we do send out regularly as well with, with important updates when appropriate. Um, so do encourage people to sign up for that. Um, and that is another avenue for the latest information and support as well that we will be um, sharing uh, with, with our customers. 
Um, and that brings me to the end of uh, my slides and a bit around uh, some of those key pieces of information. So I believe I'm handing back over to Ewan, who's going to take us through some of the pre-submitted questions that we've had. Yep. Uh, thank you very much, David. And thank you, Haley, as well, both of you for going over um, that today. I'm sure people have found it very useful. Uh, so we're going to go over look at some of the pre-submitted questions. I do apologise if some of these have already been answered, um, but it's just a, a lot of these questions come up again in the Q and A, so we will uh, reinforce them. And also, I've been uh, typing away in the Q and A, so uh, may have missed some of the, the key parts that um, we've spoken about. But yes, so to start with the Q and A. Um, I'll, I'll go through some of the answers, and I'm sure David and Haley, you can jump in as well. Um, this might be a good one for uh, either of you to start on, though, is um, about the teacher assess grades. So, what format will need will be needed to upload the final tag? Yeah, I can answer that one. Um, so, it depends on the qualification um, as to what the format uh, will need to be up uploaded. Um, so for international A level, uh, they need to be submitted at the unit level grades, um, not at the, the qualification level. Um, that is due to the modular nature of those qualifications. Um, those uh, grades could then be used uh, in a future series, perhaps, if, if a, a learner um, wished to. So we would be expecting unit grades um, for international A level. For international GCSE, uh, we would be expecting the qualification grade, and that is because of the linear nature of those qualifications. Um, the papers all build up to the, the one grade at the end. So uh, for international GCSE um, and for UK GCSE and A-levels, it will be the qualification grade. But for IAL, um, it will be at the modular level, and then those will be submitted through Edexcel online. Uh, it will be a, a similar portal um, to as was used uh, last year, but with some improvements based on uh, some of the, the customer feedback that we, we did have um, from last year as well. So hopefully that is the answer. Perfect. Thank you very much, David. Um, and just to note, because it's, it's come up in a, a couple of times <clears throat> in the chat today, um, we have had some questions about specific UK qualifications. Um, if you want more information on, on the UK qualifications, there are um, events running at the end of this month specifically for the corporate requirements around them. So for UK GCSE and GCE, um, do look out for those events. They are available on the Training for Pearson website. Okay, so number two was, is there a requirement to consider three plus pieces of evidence per qualification? Um, so I think we answered that in... Um, the presentation today it would depend on what you've outlined in your center policy uh, and how you're going to be using the unseen material uh, the unseen materials or not using them um, and then what um, option you're going down and and supplying that evidence whether it's past papers mocks classworks classroom tests and things like that so the amount of evidence you'll need to supply will be in relation to the option that you that you've decided to to choose um, the next one was about what should evidence for your tag look like? Um, so the, the, that would, as we said, it depends on the option you've used and uh, that evidence will look different for each centres uh, centre because centres have been affected in different ways throughout the past year. And um, so it's, it's to do with the evidence available to you. And the key thing is just to make sure that you are letting us know what evidence you will be using. Um, but also on page nine of the Pearson guidance document uh, outlines outlines this a little bit more. So do do check there for that. Um, we had a question about are there any requirements about specific past papers that can be used, or do we have to use specific past papers? So there aren't any requirements in that. All of the past papers are eligible to be used. Um, you should find them all currently on the website, on the qualification pages, uh, under course materials, and then under um, exam papers. Some of those are still padlocked um, because we heard back from centres that you wanted us to keep them secure um, because some of you were planning on using them. So candidates won't have been able to access them. 
Um, so just to remind you, those that are under silver padlock, you will need your EOL, your edXL online login details um, to get in to access those. And if you don't know them as a teacher, um, your exam officer definitely will and will either be able to share the login details with you or to download those past papers for you. Um, the next question was, do, you, do we need to scan all the evidence we'll use? So I believe we're currently exploring this um, and um, we'll confirm shortly what the process will look like. Um, we've had some questions around the unseen material. Some people were asking, do we have to use the unseen material? Um, the answer is, is no, you don't have to use the unseen material. Um, that's just one of the options available to you and it depends how you're going to decide to do, to let us know um, through the centre policy of what you're going to be using. Ewan, can I just jump in on the unseen assessment because there's a couple of questions on it and just, just to clarify. Um, so the use of the unseen uh, assessment kind of after um, the certain date is the date on which the exam has been sat. So it's not that you have to wait till the very end of the window to use those. Um, it is after the date uh, on which the uh, the assessment was scheduled from. So if it was from the 26th, if, it, if the schedule was on the 26th of April, you could then use that from the, the 27th uh, or from the 26th onwards, really. Um, so that was one to just clarify. Um, the second one was around the marking of those unseen assessments. Um, you don't have to have answered all of the questions, um, perhaps to, to send it in for marking by us. Um, if uh, it's just parts of it, we are accepting um, those those scripts as well. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the, the, the full paper. Um, yeah, and I think, um, I think that was it. And then just the last one that they could, we will be making available uh, digital copies of the unseen assessments um, so that you will be able to edit those if, um, if centres so wished. Perfect. Thanks, Mark David. Um, here's one for you guys as well is, um, are we able to use different options across different subjects within the same school? Yeah, I can answer that one as well. Um, yes, um, that that is is a, a possible approach. Um, it, as long as it's outlined within your centre policy that that is uh, an approach that is being taken, um, then, then that is acceptable. And also, if there are any uh, differences by individual student, make sure that that is recorded uh, as part of the evidence as well. And that has also just uh, made me think of uh, another one for the unseen assessment as well. It, uh, it doesn't have to be for every individual subject that you use the unseen assessment for. So you may use it for um, maths and geography, uh, but you may not use it for... Um, history and modern foreign languages. Um, so it, it can be slightly different, but that needs to be outlined within your centre policy as to how you are doing it. Um, so it can be slightly different. Thank you very much, David. Um, another one for you guys uh, is about private candidates and to do with the unseen materials. So for private candidates, do you have to use the unseen materials or can you assess them in line with how you're assessing other students at your centre? Yeah, um, it's exactly the same approach for private candidates as it is for any other candidate. Um, so the assessment process is, is designed to be the same um, for all, uh, all candidates um, have got uh, kind of access to the, the same um, materials, um, so it's it's that range of evidence um, is is acceptable for, for private candidates. Uh, what I would say though is that it could be dependent on the individual relationship that a private candidate has with a centre. Um, 
for some private candidates, they may um, have more of a relationship with a the centre. They may have been able to sort of accumulate more evidence over time, and therefore they may um, choose to take a slightly different approach, uh, where um, uh, an individual candidate doesn't have uh, a relationship with the centre, um, and the intention was um, to, to just sit the exams at that centre. Um, then it might be that the unseen materials uh, marked by Pearson is the approach to, to take for, for that individual. Um, but as I say, this, the approach apl applies for all candidates. Private candidates could use um, uh, any of those approaches to, to determine uh, their grades this year. Great. Thank you very much. Um... So that was to the tags. Um, so one of the questions was around unseen materials and, and what would the what will these look like? Will they be unpublished questions and things like that? So I think again we covered that in the presentation that the unseen materials are previously unpublished questions. Um, so they are they are new materials, and in terms of when they should be used, as David mentioned, um, the they have scheduled dates and um, they can be used on the specific date uh, or that they've been scheduled for securely or after this date non-securely. However, they should be treated um, as you would normally treat exam papers before this. So they will need to be stored securely by, by your centre. Um, we had questions around taking the material from. So can we take material from the unseen material and use it? as part of our own mock papers we're producing. So we don't have to use the whole of the unseen material. So yes, you can do that. You can take the unseen material and use that material in your own mocks. However, you won't be able to do that until after the secure, uh, sorry, the scheduled exam date, just to make sh sure that those materials remain secure up until that point. Um, we had a couple of questions as well, which I think you've just answered there around uh, digital copies of assessments. Um, and I think we're looking to put those uh, online closer to the exam date. And we had a couple of questions as well about grade descriptors in the chat. So just to check um, my understanding of this, they, these are going to be released on the 4th of May. Will they be made available on the qualification pages? Or do you know? Where uh, how these will be made available at the moment? Yeah, um, so uh, I would expect that they are uh, they sort of follow the same website route. Um, so on our summer twenty twenty one support website, we have the drop down for where you can get the grading support by qualification. So under international GCSE or international A level or our UK qualifications as well. Uh, if you click down to that banner, it will display all the subjects. And then if you click on the subject, it will take you to um, the, the, the support page as to where you can then link to those. Uh, our materials are being stored um, on the qualifications pages where um, teachers have told us they would expect to see um, materials. So we did ask teachers as to where they would want things. Um, they did tell us that you want it on the qualifications, uh, the, the subject page under um, these sort of support drop down. So we've, we've, we've put it there as well, but they will be available through that access route. Perfect, thank you very much. Um, so a couple of questions around the marking service. Uh, so this one is very technical, um, so I'll, I'll definitely not try and answer this for myself. <laughs> So will the same notional UMS score be used? Will the raw marks be assigned to the notional be assigned to the notional UMS or will raw marks be assigned to the UMS scores as in the subject specification? Yeah, well, I can do that one as well. I think Hayley and I have got a, a, a good team going here. I can see she's doing the Q and A's. Uh, I'll do these. Um, so with the uh, UMS scores, uh, the, the plan is to follow the same approach as we did for summer 2020. Um, so where, um, 
we haven't uh, been able to go through our, our full and uh, normal awarding processes. We can't um, attribute uh, UMS in, in the same sort of way that we would for raw marks. Um, so we will be assigning uh, the average UMS mark um, to awarded grades. That will then ensure that uh, learners can uh, use those units again in the future um, if they, they wanted to. Um, so we are assigning the average UMS mark to the awarded grade, um, not uh, to the raw mark. And that is because of the way the, the awarding um, process, uh, again, this year is working uh, in a slightly different way, but it does uh, enable progression for learners going forward, and it does enable them to be able to use those units again in future series. Perfect. Thank you, David. And very good to hear about being able to use the um, units again in future series, especially with our with our international A-levels and the modular approach. People will be setting units now that they'll be looking to cash in maybe next year. So good that, good that that's um, planned as well. Um, question two of the marking service that we got was, if I get my materials marked by Pearson using the marking service, do I have to use this in my basket of evidence? So... That would depend on what you've let us know via your centre policy. Um, you know, if you said you're using option one um, and that you're planning on doing that, then that's what we will be expecting. However, this is down to the, is, is down to centre choice. You don't have to use um, the, the unseen materials that we've marked. If for some reason you don't think those are reflective of your candidates, you could use um, another option. So you don't have to use that. Is the marking service available for unseen materials sat securely and non-securely? So, yes, uh, the marking service is available for the unseen materials. Um, and whether you've sat it securely or non-securely, uh, so that's after the scheduled exam date, you can opt in and choose to use the marking service. However, the caveat around that is that you do need to make sure that your scripts are with us by the 1st of June. Um, to make sure that we have time to mark those and um, get those marks back out to you. Um, so you can use it either way as long as you've got the scripts to us by the 1st of June. Um, just got a couple more questions. Uh, so how are students supposed to do so many exams on the same day? So this year, due to the increased flexibility, um, the, the, the scheduled exams are on days, not time slots. So normally how you would have, you know, your time slot for international GCSE maths A be, say, 9 till 11. This year, you have the day in which you're able to set it to make it uh, and set it securely. And then after that day, you can set it non-securely. So you have the flexibility to work within the day in terms of um, how your candidate, what exams your candidate sorry, what uh, papers your candidates will sit on the day. And then after that, you have the window that you can set it non-securely in. Okay. Um, that really brings us to the end of our pre-submitted questions. Just, I also want to, just to highlight to people, um, there was an international bulletin that went out yesterday that contained more information uh, around the centre policy. Uh, sorry, all right. uh, it contained information where to find the centre policy. Um, which is now on our website, and also more information around the marking service and fees associated with that. Um, so if you haven't already seen it, do look out for that international bulletin. It has uh, the most up-to-date information in there um, and is a great a great source of uh, um, information on the, the series um, this year. So I would just like to say thank you. So thank you to our GQA colleagues. Um, Haley and David for going over uh, that with us today. And thank you both for answering the questions, um, both the pre-submitted and you can see Haley has been working away on the Q&A questions that you guys have been submitting as well. Um, and thank you all as well for your attendance today at this event. Uh, I know that you're all busy with um, teaching and, and planning for the series going on. So, you know, we appreciate you coming along. Um, we hope this has provided more information and guidance into the processes that you're going to use uh, this year. Um, and really, thank you for me, and I hope you all enjoy the rest of the day.